Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. In this video, I'm gonna show you some modifications I made to my CNC router to make it do something it, well, basically wasn't designed to do. Fair warning though, if you don't like to live on the edge, uh, this video isn't for you. If you like to push things to their limits, well then, stick around. Alright, so basically what you see here is the furthest out this machine can reach and cut. This point right here is the home position. That's about almost four inches from the edge of the table. So what I needed to do was put a piece out here hanging off the edge of the table that would actually hang below because it was like 15, 20 inches deep and I could make some cutouts in that. So what I needed to do essentially was to extend this head, move this head out so this machine could reach over the edge of this table. I'm gonna show you how I did that. I knew the machine was robust enough to be able to handle the additional loads I would be putting on it. So I, designed a, a spacer essentially that fits between the z-axis mount and then the spindle mount that extended it out approximately eight inches and I did this I fabricated a, a, a spacer out of aluminum this is an aluminum I-beam that has some stiffeners welded into it and after it was welded up of course it bent so Ooh. I had a buddy of mine who's a machinist who's way better at that kind of stuff than I am. I had him machine these surfaces perfectly flat and parallel and duplicate the hole patterns in these ends that match the hole pattern in the original machine. And there's also these alignment pins, if you've ever taken your head off, that keep everything square uh, to, the, to the table. That's these two pins right here. And these are the holes for the mounting bolts. So we duplicated the whole pattern here and then the whole pattern here. And this is where the pins on this part insert. So basically you take this off, you pop that in there, you put this back on here and you've lengthened your reach of your machine by eight inches. And that worked for me for a couple of the projects that I did. I did end up having to make another, another spacer that went out on the end of this that actually extended my reach by an additional half an inch. Oh, and I'm not gonna give you the real specifics on step-by-steps, how I built this, dimensions, plans, whatever, um, because you, you have to realize this, this modification may actually void your warranty. And I haven't talked with uh, the manufacturer of this CNC machine about that, but I just have a feeling that, you know, yeah, they'd say no, uh, sorry, pal. So uh, that's the reason I won't do that. Uh, if you're smart enough, uh, you built your own CNC machine, or if you can build this, uh, you can figure out all the dimensions you need by measuring what you got. So let me show you how this goes on here. And then that'll, that, that the additional reach that it will give me, and then I will actually show you the project, or one of the projects that I actually use this for. Okay, so there's the, that's how that mounts on there. The pins, that's what keeps that all lined up. So this gets set aside. Now this on the spacer, here's where the lineman pins go, here's the bolts.
Okay, spacers installed with the half inch plate. So anyway, let's show you right here the new home. Sorry for the jiggly camera, guys. Anyway, that is my new home position. That's where I can cut. That is about four and three quarters off the edge of the table. But obviously, I have to support my work out here and I'm gonna show you the jig that I built for that. And that actually only gives me about four and a sixteenth after you take in that, con that uh, fixture that holds the work that I can reach off the edge of the table. Now you can probably see better the reach I get over the end of the table. It's, uh, I can reach approximately, I'd say four and a sixteenth, four and an eighth over the index face of my jig right here, which is about five eighths off the end of the table. So that really expands the capabilities, lets me be able to cut this out in something that's much deeper than my table can handle. Uh, I'll show you some of the other projects I've done in the past that have, instead of a cutout, they have a series of holes that all have to be very precise, uh, which is really, really uh, critical using the CNC to get the repeatability for the quantities that I needed. But this is definitely a game changer for me. Uh, I realize that it probably, like I said, vo voids my warranty, but you know, what are you gonna do? Sometimes you just gotta push things to their limits and get the job done. So let me show you some of that stuff, the projects we did. We'll just move along. Okay, so that's how I modified my machine to do something it wasn't designed to do. Um, I made this thing much more useful. 
I can do stuff hanging off the edge of the table now that has depth. This, hap this case here happens to be about 19 and a half, 20 inches deep. I uh, wouldn't be able to do that if I couldn't hang over the edge of the machine. Um, I realize that you know not everyone's going to want to do something like this to their machine, nor that they need to. And keep in mind that I'm just using basically one eighth inch cutters. I'm not putting a lot of force on the head. It's it's pretty limited. I'm not hogging out oak with a three quarter or half inch uh, bit. So uh, I, it keeps the vibration down, which also makes this possible. But you know, if you were to use slower uh, feeds and speeds, you might be able to do that with a smaller bit as well. Like if you wanted to do some custom dovetails or something hanging off the edge of this machine, it might very well be possible. I haven't tried it. I think I will sooner or later, but basically, you know, this is, this is what I had to do to get this job done. Uh, and you'll see some pictures of the other jobs I had to do uh, that I just couldn't do uh, the old fashioned way. I used to do this with a jigsaw lay these cutouts out uh, by hand with a template and then use a jigsaw and a drill, you know, to drill the corners, cut it out with a jigsaw, clean up the edges, drill the holes. It took a lot of time. This definitely uh, reduced the amount of time. However, you know, there was the, the time involved in building the jig and making the, the, the V-car foul. That's all added in there, but it still makes it, it's a very repeatable. I, I did 10 cases just like this. I've already done 15 of these before and another batch of eight. So, you know, the more I do, the, the more effective this whole thing is. But keep in mind though, that, you know, this still have its limitations as far as, you know, what size cutter, what size feeds and speeds you can, you can push on this and even what materials. This is a fairly soft plastic. It, it actually cuts really well with the one eight spiral upcut bit. Um, but, the other options were to buy a different machine. You know, I'm just working with the machine I got and it can do it if you spend the time to make the mod. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. If you uh, like this, please, you know, subscribe. Leave me a comment below what you think of this. Tell me if you think it's stupid. Some people probably will think it's stupid. You know, it's like, you can avoid my warranty probably. But in my situation, it was worth it. So. Let me know what you think and uh, thanks for watching.